I'm getting weird vibes. Okay, I don't think you can see how small this is. Welcome back, you guys. This is episode two of my house hunting journey in Japan with my family. If you are just tuning in, um, this episode we are going to look at three more houses for rent that my family has been considering to move into for the next few years. We also look at two different properties in the first episode. One is the Seaside Townhouse, which we actually really, really liked. It checked off a lot of boxes for our family. The view was amazing, but we didn't really like like that it was a townhouse so it touched and was just very intimate with our neighbors but everything else about it was really great and then house number two was really cozy it had like a western flair to it but i'm pretty sure it was haunted and it was about half of what our budget is while we are house hunting in today's video we are going to be looking at three more properties two of them are modern homes and then one of them is just like a very cozy house there are some interesting characteristics with japanese homes that are just so different to american or western style homes and i'm really excited to show you guys these properties because who doesn't like looking at houses? Like, I'm just such a nosy bitch. Like, even when I'm traveling, I'm just like walking down streets hoping people's windows are open so I can like look inside and see how they're decorated and stuff. Like, there's really nothing better to me. Let's go over our wish list to refresh everybody's memory. We need a pet friendly home because we have a medium sized dog. We would love a four bedroom house or a three bedroom with a bonus room, one for our toddler, and then a convertible room that could be a guest room slash office for me. We need some kind of outdoor space, like a small yard or to be near a park. We want a neighborhood that is walkable and safe for our dog and toddler. My husband is willing to commute to work up to 45 minutes by train or car. Because we're closer to the city, we want to be within 15 minutes walking to a train station. A single family home would be most ideal, and we would love something with two parking spots. So let's go ahead and get into today's video. Hopefully we can find our future next home. Option three is the Puzzle House. It is a newer Japanese home with modern finishes, and it is coming in under budget at around 2,000 US dollars. Thank you. Oh, I like how much storage is out here. The other ones didn't have a lot of storage, like, um, yeah, the first one, but not nearly as much as our old house. Oh, I like the mirror. We didn't have a mirror in our old house to see what we looked like. Why is this such a random perk? This is so new and nice. I like this little area. We can put our keys and stuff. Nice closet. Shoe rack. Oh, this is great because we can close it off. We've got a new, yeah, I mean, there's still like sticky stuff on this fridge. I like the kitchen. This peach sink is so interesting. That's the view and you get a view of the highway, which is a little meh, but this is pretty. Oh, oh, this is cool. So there's a sink at the base of the staircase with the toilet. Okay. This is cute. So this is like randomly in the room. And it's storage, but it's like so cute. Wow. Oh my gosh, how fun would this be? You could put like Akachan room. Like an Akachan room? <laughs> like a playroom? Yeah, yeah. That would be so cute. <laughs> it's like the perfect size and it's safe. Oh wow, that is so funny. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. Okay, I don't think you can see how small this is, but it is very small. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> that is so cute. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, 
Okay, and then it goes to the highway, but there's a patio, which is nice. Can we put a grill? A very weird layout. Yeah. Very weird layout. But I'm not mad about it either. <laughs> okay, so it looks like it's not three stories. It's like a middle floor. You come up, and here's a platform, and here's this room. It's like a tatami-ish room, but there's no storage or anything like that in here. The highway's kind of weird. Does it have fiber so let's go up one more floor. Oh, there's another small room. This is... I'm getting weird vibes. What kind of things would you put in here? Like, look at this. They're still in this, like, third floor area. We've got a really nice shower and bathroom situation with a washer dryer. We are going up to hopefully the last floor. This one's a tatami room, which is actually kind of cute and a huge closet. Wow, so much space. But again, it overlooks the highway. And then this is the last bedroom, which would be really cute for a baby room, but even this is like weird storage. Anyway, yes. So yeah, it's like a such a strange no, layout. Uh, I, I just stood and looked at, just stood there in front of the exit ramp. Oh I, yeah, the highway is ugly. ugly. Yeah. I liked it when we first walked in, yeah, and then after and that, and I liked the kitchen, and I the liked the living room. The living room were nice, but, but the, then it got weird. The, <laughs> the, the storage spaces are strange. I think that this house would be really great for a single couple or a single couple with a pet. With our toddler, just the way that all of the steps were going, um, it just felt really not safe for our family to live in. And we were just not down with the highway being right across the street. We kind of wanted something a little more peaceful and relaxing. So let's go look at the next house. Option four is the brick home. This is a renovated Japanese house coming in under budget at 2,000 US dollars. Nice little tatami room right here with big closets. It opens out into the garden, which is so nice. Love all the storage. This is the bedroom, which is absolutely insane. I feel like an entire family could live in here. It's massive. I've never seen a bedroom this big before. This is the fourth house we have looked at. And so far, I really like it. It's pretty nice, but we're going to keep moving around. It's cute. I really like the floors in here. I like the lighting. This is cozy. I don't know where our TV would go. We've got the kitchen and then the living room, dining room space. It's all together. It's actually really pretty inside. I love the color of everything in the kitchen. Looks like there's decent space. Gas range. It's like right off the staircase. Got a little storage area. There's no air conditioning in here. Bedroom, room situation. There's a little desk in the corner. So I guess you could make this an office or a bedroom. 
a little study. We love how cozy, warm, and inviting this house is. It really felt like home when we walked into it. Rooms were a really great size, and there were a lot of things in the house that we were willing to compromise on. And this house was also under our initial budget. We really, really love this home. Option five is the brand new build. Nobody has ever lived in this house, and it is really going to stretch and come over budget at $2,800. The Genkan entrance. This is a brand new house. So much storage. And then in here, we have the laundry room and a little get ready moment. So we would have to come downstairs to get ready if we chose this house. It's a washer and dryer in one, but we would probably only use this for washing and then get a dryer because in our last house we did not do that and I highly regret it. Lots of storage up there, which is great. And then we turn around and we've got a bathroom. It's so beautiful. So you really like this house, but it's on the much, much higher end of our price range. So we're going to see if we can make it work. I love this kitchen. Yeah, we had the same appliances in our last home. Yeah, the same, like exact, almost exact came, same kitchen, and it's a lot of more. Same dishwasher, same dishwasher. Yeah. Yeah, exactly the same. Exactly all the same. I mean, this house was newly built. It smells, it smells basically like paint and glue. <laughs> Here's room number two. So room two and three are about the same size. So here's the third room, which actually gets really nice lighting. Got a bathroom upstairs. Then in here is another storage room, which I feel like you could turn into an office. You just have to figure out the airflow situation because they don't have any AC set up in here. The brand new build was so stunning and I still think about that house. I know for a fact this was not going to be the one for our family. Because it was a brand new build, this house was actually asking for an extra deposit and then another deposit on top because we have a dog. The realtor actually asked to take a picture to send to the owner of our dog and we knew as soon as that was going to happen they were not even going to accept us because our dog is a mix and yeah, as soon as they saw the picture, we knew we weren't going to get accepted and it was going to cost us between 10 and 12,000 US dollars just to move into that house. With a few of those being deposits and a few of those being like gifts to the realtor. Uh, yeah, it was like really insane. And I was like, that's crazy. It was the top of our budget. We knew that we had three other hardcore options for our family to move into that were under budget, if not half of the budget we allotted for. Now I'm curious to know which house you would choose. Obviously, you know, two of the houses we just were not rolling with, um, but I would love to know what you guys would choose suitable for your family. Um, in the next episode, you will find out which house we moved into because I'm gonna give you guys a house tour that just makes sense, part two. If you know, you know. If you don't, that might've sounded confusing. Stay tuned, you guys. Bye.